And I think this question, sometimes I've been asked before, like, why medicine, why not nursing? But really, I think it's like, I don't know that for me, I can even separate the two anymore. Mm -hmm. Hello, Grace Patrice. Welcome. Come in. Come in. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good, good, good. Are you excited for our video? I am really excited. I woke up this morning, worked out, got a few things together, and I started preparing to have you over. That is wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having us and for agreeing to be on the pre-med channel. We are so excited to have you. I love it. I'm all about mentorship. Nice. How's your day going? Pretty good so far. It's been a pretty chill day. Um, not much going on. So I'm really excited that I have this video to do because it's the highlight of my day. Okay, so can you tell us your name? <laughs> my name is Christy Bella Ajanagrakapala, but a lot of people call me Bella. That is so awesome. Can you tell us what which school you're in? So I currently attend the Mayo Clinic Alex School of Medicine. How are you liking it so far? I'm loving Mayo. That is awesome. That is really nice to hear. What year are you? So I'm a first year medical student at Mayo. Nice. That's wonderful. What made you choose Mayo? Um, you made me choose Mayo. <laughs> but really, I had prior experiences with Mayo, and um, there was no place I'd rather be than Mayo. That is such a beautiful answer. Thank you for sharing with us, Bella. Thank you. How are you liking medical school so far? I'm actually loving medical school. I feel like I had a lot of like concerns and like anxiety provoking questions and issues prior to coming into med school. But I think being at Mayo so far has kind of quelled those like anxieties and issues I had. And, and I think actually it's the best decision I've made in my adult life. Nice. Do you mind sharing with us like a couple of the things you were like worried about prior to like applying to medical school? So prior to medical school, I was a nurse and I worked at Mayo. And so I was kind of doing the things I loved, taking care of patients by bedside and, you know, having a lot of interaction with people from different parts of the world. And going into med school for me, I had quite a few, um, not objections, but quite a few like, um, challenges because I thought, you know, as a nurse, I would stop work, working, which meant like, you know, I, I would go into taking loans from med school. I would not have as much contact with patients, which I really love. And like the third part was, I wondered if I was ready to actually go back to school again. But um, being in med school so far, Mayo is so amazing such that I have been able to continue to have like, care with patients, I've been able to provide care still. We've had like a lot of patient interactions for just in first years and like the issue of loans and costs has been much alleviated by Mayo's financial aid and like I think they are the most generous and like the most well fitted program for me. That is awesome. Yeah, that was going to feed into my next question which I think you already answered which was um, why Mayo Clinic? Why did you choose Mayo Clinic Alex School of Medicine? I know you've already touched on some points like um, scholarship, but if you can um, elaborate more, that would be awesome. So with Mayo, I think that the biggest thing for me was that I had first-hand experience with Mayo. So it wasn't just about like doing research and reading up about Mayo and reaching out to people. I was a part of Mayo before I became a medical student. So for me, I already knew the potential I would have at Mayo, and I already knew what Mayo provided. I think that it, 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 it is much more important when you have like first-hand knowledge with an organization versus when you hear about them. And Mayo is that organization that lives very much to its reputation, and so it wasn't a very hard decision for me at all. 
That is awesome. Thank, Thank you, you so much. So Thank how you. are you loving being a first year medical student at Mayo Clinic? Um, I, I love Mayo. I, I, I like, I feel like medical school can be a very challenging and dramatic change for a lot of people. But being at Mayo has been a very big change, but it has been dramatic in a very positive way. Like I haven't regretted going to med school so far. I haven't regretted picking Mayo so far. And I'm still able to do things that I love, like the selective weeks. They just give you time to do whatever you care about and whatever, whatever you love. And if that is shadowing and just like taking a vacation, doing whatever, reading a book, Mayo just makes you a human being. And I think that is what I wanted to be going into medical school. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So why medicine? Why not nursing? Because it, you did have a great experience working as a nurse. I did. And I think this question sometimes I've been asked before, like why medicine, why not nursing? But really I think it's like, I don't know that for me I can even separate the two anymore. Mm -hmm. Because it's like nursing for me still becomes a part of medicine. Mm -hmm. So it's not like I'm really abandoning nursing, even though I consider myself a retired nurse. But I feel like I get to bring all of those nursing skills into medicine and learn more about pathophysiology of diseases and just apply that overall knowledge to the care of a patient. And I think that is fantastic. That is awesome. So what has been your favorite part about like going to school, going to class, um, just being a med, just being, a, you know, the whole like med student. student, MS1? Um, I think my favorite part is actually getting to know the student in my class. I feel like, I don't know how it's done, I've never inquired about like how students are picked to get to mail, but I feel like I'm in a class with very, very interesting, brilliant, and just emo emotionally mature group of people that I'm very curious and excited to learn about my classmates. Um, and actually, I haven't been a class goer very much, but I think one of the things that motivates me to go to class is actually getting to see people and like knowing what they think and their responses to questions in class and just seeing just the kind of diversity that people bring to the class. That is so awesome. What has been your least favorite part about being a med student? Oh, I think my least favorite part about being a med student is just, I think the resource overload. Because I feel like for everything we're doing, people come up with like this 20 resources that you could apply. Like it's like if it's histology, there are like 20 resources you could apply. And if it's like anatomy, there are like 30 more resources and you're just like, am I missing out? And then you start to like think, what should I use? What should I not use? That can be a bit distracting. And so that hasn't been my favorite part of med school, but it hasn't been debilitating that I would say it's a disadvantage. It's just something that I struggle with in deciding should I use this resource or should I use that. That is awesome. That's a yeah. very, I really, um, that's like so accurate. As a med student myself, I can totally relate to that. What has been your favorite class so far? Actually, I think anatomy. Wow. Yeah, anatomy. Can you tell us why? Um, I'm not sure, but I just felt like every time I was studying it, I was very engaged. Mm. It wasn't like a passive process, it was a very active process. And like, I was able to like, okay, it's like, oh, the biceps, and I'm like, okay, my biceps. Like, it was very real to me. And so I enjoyed studying it a lot, and I think that's why. And we have, we've only had four classes, but out of the four, I would say anatomy has been my favorite one. That is awesome. What has been your least favorite class? That's a histology. Why? Um, histology just seems a bit far-fetched for me. Um, it's like you're looking at slides and everything just looks like just a, like a blob of color with like specks on it and they all mean this very dramatic things. And that has been a hard concept for me to grasp. Um, and I, I, prior to med school, I hadn't had any uh, exposure to histology, so it made it a bit more like um, strange for me. So I would say it was my least, it's been my least favorite, um, but not in a way that I hate it or anything. It's just, it's very new to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, 
I know you are still like pretty new in med school and you're just starting, but can you tell us of like one memory you've made so far that like you're gonna cherish in your heart for a long time? I think that the most impactful thing that I have experienced in med school was like uh, watching a video that I saw during like one of our afternoon sessions. It's called um, Disruptions in Development. And one of my favorite um, faculty played this video about a body donor who was going to donate their body to um, immunoscience to be like to be like a cadaver. And that was so impactful for me that um, I couldn't stop thinking about it and it completely, I think, validated some of my uh, feelings and gave a new meaning to anatomy, the anatomy course for me. So I think that has been the most impactful part of my journey so far. Thank you for sharing. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you, Grace Patrice. Mm -hmm. So, um, as a med student, how do you, you know, manage your time and like manage stress? Because we all know med student, um, med school can be a lot for, you know, for students. So, how do you manage your time and also how do you manage your, um, how do you manage stress? So, I will say that I haven't gotten to a point of competence with managing stress over time. I think I am still a work in progress. Um, I tend to. Um, not be very good with stress management but i think mayo has helped with having resources that are there to like quell some of your anxieties and fears like when you reach out to professors they're very open understanding and willing to meet with you and like explain things to you i even had a professor actually like uh call me on zoom on like a saturday to explain things before an exam that Monday and they even asked me to reach out to him on Sunday if I had more questions. So things like that are very, very important to me and they make me less anxious about things. I, I will say that I could do a better job managing my time and stress and I keep saying that at the beginning of every block I say, oh, I'm going to do better this block, I'm going to be on it and I, 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 yeah, I'm not there yet. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for being very honest with us because that's the story of like most medical students, honestly. Yeah, yeah. that's definitely my reality. Mm -hmm. So what do you do for fun in med school? So for fun, I like to run uh, as a form of exercise. Um, I like to travel and I know it's, it sounds very strange like travel in med <laughs> school, but I do love to travel and maybe it gives you those opportunities to travel and those come in form of selective weeks where you could actually do a kind of travel that is health or medical related and use that time to like, you know, experience a different culture and seeing them from the context of like medical providers perspective. So I've been able to do that actually quite a bit being at uh, Mayo Med School. Also, I like to um, watch TV shows and movies. The most recent being Squid Game that I love. And Squid Game is awesome. Yes, I think Squid Game has changed my life. <laughs> so I like to keep up with my shows and TV. Like I can still keep up with the things I was doing and enjoying prior to med school. That is awesome. It's nice to have such a you know a good school life balance where you don't feel so overwhelmed. So that's great. I'm glad you have like um, things you're doing for fun. What specialty do you see yourself um, in after graduation? I know it's like so it's early. early. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I would say, before I say anything, I'll say that if you saw me in the future doing something a little different from what I say today, please don't judge me. <laughs> but I like specialties where I can use my hands, nice. things that are very technical. Mm -hmm. So if I wasn't in nursing or medical school, I think I would be a carpenter because you could just put things together and it becomes a table. Nice. And that's kind of what I want to do with medicine. Uh, so for me, that lends itself to procedural specialties and one of the top ones on my list, I would have to say, is orthopedic surgery. Nice. Yeah, however, um, there are so many other procedural, procedural specialties that I haven't explored. So please don't hold me to this in a few years when I'm doing something completely different. But yeah. That is awesome. Thank you so much for sharing with us. Thank you. Do you have any advice for medical students, people currently applying to med school? Mm -hmm. 
Um, I think that my biggest advice would be to stay off of student doctor network. As mm -hmm. yeah. I think there are a lot of misconceptions about the process of being in medicine and going to medical school. If I were to have listened to everything I read online, I probably wouldn't have applied to New York Medical School. So I think the first thing is to actually be sure that you want to actually be in medicine and be aware of the time commitment, the potentially long financial commitment, and the just age commitment and the sacrifices you have to make from your personal life before making, you know, undertaking this medical school journey. Then past that, I would say, you know, be true to yourself. A lot of times people don't care about how much you know or how smart you are in class. People care about how much you care about them. And so I think that in the midst of thinking of doing well and scoring at the 100 percentile of your MCAT and all that stuff, remember that being a good person inherently is what patients see in the future. I see a few physicians for like my health and like wellness, um, and I, I don't know that I've ever thought for one second what their grades were in class. So all that mattered to me was how they treated me and how much I thought they cared about me. And I think that's something to keep uh, in the forefront of your mind as you pursue all of the you know, research publications and all of the check box things. Just be aware also that who you are inside really does matter to the journey of medicine. Wow, I think that's such a powerful advice. Even for me as a classmate, that was like <laughs> very powerful. I'm definitely going to keep that even though I'm not a pre-med because like, it's so true. Ultimately, it's who you are that patients care about. So. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, just a last one. Um, what what advice would you give to anyone who wants to apply to Mayo Medical School but feels that they might not qualify or Mayo might be like the reach school for them? I think so. Just to just also give a quick background. I was never the top in my class. I was a nurse, non-traditional student. I didn't have like lots of publications. Um, but one thing that I know for sure, based on my personal experience at Mayo, is that Mayo cares about you as a whole. And so checking boxes is good. There is a book I would actually encourage you to read. It's called um, Excellent Sheep. And it talks about how students are led to check all these boxes like sheep for things they need, they think they need to have to get into medical school. And yes, you have to fulfill all those like minimum requirements. But I think at the end of the day, you have to show that you are a human being with a life. Because if you are very inconsistent with your, for example, you spend one hour with Habitat for Humanity building the house, and you spend one hour at the cannabis store uh, helping to cultivate some uh, weed, it, there's just no consistency there in the things that you're passionate about. I think Mayo wants to see that there is a consistency with things you're passionate about and that you're someone that follows through with long-term commitments. And so if you're interested in, for example, the Habitat for Humanity, seeing the stretched out commitment and like, you know, allocating your time to that, I think would mean more than having so many different bullet points of uh, things you have done that may you may think makes you seem well rounded but really it might just show that you're just like a very impulsive person and it might not really lend well to the admissions committee so i think showing dedication and commitment to one thing means a lot at, especially at mayo because that's how you're going to be committed to the field of medicine that would show that you have some grit you don't quite well you won't give up when things get hard and I think that's one of the biggest things at Mayo. And I think also the advice I would have, especially for Mayo, is to be yourself. I think that now being a student at Mayo, we can, I can almost tell, and Grace Patrice, I don't know if you can tell this, that the admissions faculty, they go through like extended like training and a lot of like just human knowledge and like the psychology of being human. And so they can kind of spot a fake from a mile away. So I think that one thing is to genuinely be yourself. And if what you want to talk about is that you love to pot plants, then talk about that without trying to compare yourself to that other applicant that 
has won like a Nobel Peace Prize and thinking that that might be worth more than potting your plants. I think it's just the dedication there that Mayo looks for. And I don't know, Grace Petrus, I don't know if you can attest to this, but Mayo is very much about who you are overall and what your likes are versus what you have tried to achieve to seem like the good can be. That's awesome. Wow. Thank you so much, Bella. That was like amazing. Thank you so much for being on my channel and for taking the time out of your busy schedule. You are so busy. <laughs> okay, let's be real. I wasn't busy today. This is like I've been looking forward to this and I'm oh. so excited that you you want me to be on your channel because you're a celebrity, right? And I'm just like, oh my gosh, I get to be on a celebrity's channel. So I'm really excited. This is like Thank my you. first ever exposure video thing. So I'm like pumped for this. Thank you so yeah. much. Uh, what are you doing? I We definitely walk into you doing some <laughs> cooking. Yeah, so I was cooking. I was trying to make jollof rice. Ooh. It's an African food and I was trying to make it for the week. But it's looking like I'm just going to eat the meat <laughs> without actually making the rice because I'm tired now and I feel like watch TV. So I might just become the meat until it's gone. I don't know, I can show you. It doesn't look quite appetizing and it doesn't look super colorful, but we just make a bunch of like meat and then use it for rice. However, I'm gonna eat all of them. So Grace, you can join me if you want to. Oh, I'd love to join you. That <laughs> meat looks very yummy. <laughs> yeah, so after this, yeah, that's it. I'm gonna study a little bit, watch some TV. The Real Housewives of Potomac is coming on today. So. That's so exciting. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much, Bella. You have a good one. Bye. Okay. Thank you so much, Grace. Bye. Bye.